We are, we are in um, week two of a collection of messages called Open House. And Open House is really an idea that the church is meant to be an open house. A house where everybody belongs. A house that is open, where, where you can come and be who you are because we believe in, 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 in the scriptures. And that's what Jesus had in mind when he came to establish his church. This isn't a club for the saved. This isn't a gathering of perfect people. There's no such thing. There's just real people and fake people. Okay? And, and our journey as a community is that we can come every Sunday to be reminded that we belong, not because of our strengths, but because of our humanity. And I'm excited for it. And um, I'm going to read this verse. It'll be on the screens. And uh, this will be the foundation. Then I'll give you my title. Then we'll pray. And then we'll, we'll have a, a little bit of therapy session for a little bit. Cool? Yeah. Amen. Matthew 5.14, the Bible says this, your lives light up the world. Your lives light up the world. For how can you hide a city that stands on a hilltop? And who would light a lamp and then hide it in an obscure place? Instead, it's a place where everyone in the house can benefit from its light. So don't hide your light. Can you tell the person next to you, don't hide your light. Let it shine brightly before others so that your commendable works will shine as light upon them and they will give their praise to your Father in heaven. Your lives are light. The title of this talk is Light Up the World. Light Up the the world. Go ahead and close your eyes for a second. Let's pray one more time. God, we come per usual to receive from you. We never come to hear the words of any man except the words of the Holy Spirit. So we give you permission to come and refocus what's out of focus, realign what's out of alignment. Lord, we rid ourselves of anything that is taking space that you want to fill. So we give you permission, Lord, to come and do what you do best miracles, signs, and wonders. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, amen and amen. Come on, can we make some noise for Jesus one more time? Because we are the light. Um, I need to confess something. Here we go. It's like, Pastor, every, every Sunday, it's like therapy, I know. There's something that I do, there's a habit that I have um, that is, um, I use the, G, the, the GPS every single day here in San Diego. I'm a horrible driver. Anybody else use the GPS like just all day long? Like, I don't know, I don't know why. Like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why. There's, like, I can't get to Ikea without the GPS. There's one Ikea in San Diego. There's just one. And I cannot, I cannot, I cannot get there. Every single day, um, I, 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 I put on the GPS. This, this past week, I had, a, uh, I had a meeting in Pacific Beach. I've been there a billion times. And um, I was at home, and I was, I was about to head to my meeting, and I put it on the GPS. And I'm like, okay, here we go. And I, I don't know why I find it soothing. Crystal thinks it's an issue that I communicate with Siri because I'm polite to AI. I'm like, hi, Siri, how are you doing? You're supposed to introduce yourself and say hello. You're not just like, take me to Ikea. No, like, rude, you know what I mean? I'm like, hi, Siri, good morning. Like, what's good? You know what I mean? Like, like you got to be nice. And, uh, um, you know, I put, in the, I put in the directions, and as I'm walking, I mean, as I'm driving, um, it continues to speak to me. It tells me, no, turn left, turn right. I, I found out that Crystal had, like, the British guy's voice, and that was concerning. <laughs> um, I'm like, who is he? <laughs> Like, he sounds attractive. That's a concern to me. It's not like, turn left. No, no, no. It's all good. It's all good. Um, anyway, so I'm, 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 I'm driving, and it's continuing to tell me these things. And finally, I get to my, my destination. And, and as I'm there, um, I, I get there a little bit early. I, I get there a little bit early, and um, I start listening to podcasts, right? So I get there. I'm, I'm arriving. I'm like 15 minutes early. So I'm just there listening to podcasts. I'm just doing my thing. And uh, finally, when it's time to go into the meeting, I'm like, okay, well, now I'm going to drive in, right? I'm going to drive into the parking lot where my meeting is. So I was there for like 15 minutes, like just kind of, you know, listening to podcasts. 
And, and then I take off, and I'm, and I'm going into my meeting now because I've been waiting there for a while. And as soon as I get in, there's this voice that tells me, you've arrived at your destination. And it freaked me out because I forgot that the GPS was still on. Like, it was like a total moment of, like, confusion because it was silent for a long time. And um, I was listening to podcasts. I was doing my thing. And then all of a sudden, as soon as I begin to move, it tells me, like, arrive at your destination. And it freaked me out. It scared me more than it should have, if I can be honest. And then what, what I realized about the GPS is that the voice stops speaking when the vehicle's not in motion. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say this to you. Um, some of us sometimes are, are waiting to hear a word from God. And we, and we begin to search and, and we become frustrated because there's been long periods of time when we don't hear a word from God. We start looking in books and we start looking through different voices. We don't find it here, so we'll go to the next church and to the next guru and to the next place and the next strategy. But what I've realized is that the voice stops speaking when the vehicle's not in motion. I'm not talking about your body. You're not a body with a soul. You're not a machine that is full of life. You're a soul that moves with a body. You can be moving your life around and yet your soul be stuck in the same position that it was three years ago. And we become frustrated. How come God has not been speaking? It's because you haven't yet moved from the last place. This, this is something about us moving. I don't mean our bodies. I don't mean our schedules. I don't mean our itineraries. But I'm talking about the growth of your soul. I'm talking about the conversations that we have with ourselves, the goals that we set for ourselves. When we don't move, I don't hear the word from God. It's almost as if God wants us to move our lives, to live our lives. It's this, the more I read about God, and the more excited I get about God, and the more passionate I get about God, I realize what God's passion is. God's passion is humans living life to the fullest. I've learned that. God is not passionate about Christians hiding themselves in a closet reading a book. He is passionate about humans going into the world and living out in flesh and blood the words that have been written for thousands of years. God is so passionate about your life, but not just as a human existing, but a human being and living and thriving and dreaming and setting goals and, and evolving. God sometimes is more passionate about your life than you are. God loves life. In fact, he loves it so much that it says your lives are the light of the world. Not, not Christian lives are the life of the world. Your life is the, life is the light of the world. Not good people are the light of the world. Not smart people. Not pastor people. Not stage people. Not clean people. Not rich people. Not educated people. Just people. Your life is the light of the world. Now, if your life is the light, you got to ask yourself the question, what kind of light are you? What kind of light are you? Are you, a, are you like a candle? I, I remember the first time I ever went to youth group in my life. Like, like it was my first time ever going to youth group. Like, first time I ever went to youth group. This was back in the days where there was no iPhones. I'm old. Skaters were the rage. I went into youth group and they were having like a cool acoustic night. It was like acoustic people sitting on the ground. There was like stains everywhere. And they put on candles everywhere because it was cool. <laughs> they put on candles and it's my first time and they sat me in the front and I'm like, little kid, I'm all concerned. And, 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 and what they didn't know is that the, the carpet gave me allergies and I sneezed and the candle blew out. A hundred percent true story. That's real. Are you like a candle that that blows out at the slightest wind of opposition. Are you a candle that is fragile? A little bit of gust and doubt comes in and you're out. Are you like a flashlight just pointing in one direction? Ain't nobody can tell you anything else because you know. And no one can tell you nothing. Are you like a light bulb? You light up a whole room, but you're static and stuck and nobody can move you. And the, when everybody leaves, you're there lighting up an empty room. 
But, but when God says that your light is like a light, he compares it to a lamp. Now, not any sort of lamp, but I'm talking about the lamps from the, from the biblical days. And let me kind of explain to you what those look like. The, 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 the lamps back in the day were the only source of light in the home. There was no electricity. There was no sdg &E. Okay? It was, just, it was just people making up their own lamps. And they would make the lamps. They would take a bunch of clay, put it together, fill it up with oil, and put like a wick made out of cotton and they would light it up, and they would take those lamps and light up other lamps, and that's how they lived. And if they needed to go outside, there was like no iPhone, right, with the lamp. It was just like the little lamp, and that's, that's how they went. And that is the metaphor that God uses as how you and I are supposed to live our lives, as lamps. Now, why did he use lamps? Because the way lamps are created, lamps are made out of clay. Clay, it's ordinary material that you can find anywhere. Filled with oil that in the scripture always represents the Holy Spirit. And they burn. Now, this is what I want you to understand. That God says you are to be like a lamp. Understand that you are to be ordinary people filled with an extraordinary being. That is the call. That is what we're supposed to be. Christians is not, how can we come and learn how to be different and extraordinary and special and supernatural and magical? No, God says, can you just live life with a passion and understand that you're made out of clay and clay is fragile and clay breaks. Clay is found everywhere. Clay is common. Can I tell you, we are common people. Do not be fooled by anybody in this room or anybody on any social media feed. Every human being is ordinary, but when you're filled with the God that is extraordinary, there is no limit to what your life can accomplish. So I, 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 I struggled with this for a long time. Because I, back in the day, I used to go to a church and I was part of a leadership team. And they would tell me, Abe, hey, you gotta go find eagles. And I'm like, eagles? There's a bunch of pigeons outside. Like, we just don't. You gotta find some eagles. And, and what the leadership man is, go find people that look like leaders on the outside. So I'm like, okay, well, like, what are we looking for? And it was usually like Ed Hardy jackets and true religion jeans. Just people that looked really cool. But then you would get close and, and they were just the same. Because even fake things look real from a distance. You get up close and you realize we're all the same. <laughs> clay is clay. You paint it however you want. You drop it once and it's just as fragile. So I, 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 I struggled because I thought that God only used eagles. I thought that God only used like good looking people that like walked in a certain way and just... They knew how to raise their hand during worship. Like, I've always felt awkward lifting them. And there's some people that just look cool. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Jesus. They know what to do. Single ladies know, like, they put their left hand up. No ring, people. You know what I'm saying? They're just like, they just know how to worship. And I'm just awkward. I'm just like, I'm trying. To, I'm crying. Like, it's weird. God reminds me every single time that there's nothing special about any of us outside of God who fills us. There's this great story in the Bible. There's a man named Jairus. Jairus was this guy. It was a, he was a guy that was known as his community, and his daughter was sick. So he calls Jesus, says, yo, Jesus, can you come to my house? And Jesus says, yes. Jesus goes to like three people's houses in the whole Bible. Like, it's special to get Jesus to come to your house. Now, imagine you're the guy that gets Jesus to go to your house, and, you, and he's going to your house, and everybody, and you, how would you walk if you're with Jesus, and he's coming over? You'd be like, yeah, what's up, guys? Yeah, oh, it's just Jesus. Where are we going? Oh, he's just, he's just coming over to the pad. No, it's, it's all good. No, it's his first time, but like we cool like that. He's just gonna come. And, and there's like a swag that comes when you think you're the only one that Jesus is walking with. When you're the only one that you're like, I got Jesus. And as if Jesus wasn't with everybody else. Yeah. 
Now, in the same day, there's this woman that, I, that I've been, had an issue that she was struggling with for 12 years. She was bleeding. She was dying. She was asked by the current government in that particular era of time, if you had this issue, you couldn't go out in public. You were considered unclean. In fact, if you went out in public, the, the punishment for you breaking that law and exposing your, your, your illness to people is that they would stone you to death because they didn't want to deal with your issue. And, and, and the Bible says that she goes and, and, she, and she has to get to Jesus because she believes that if she can get to Jesus, she will be healed. Now, I've heard this message preached like a million times, and they tell me, this woman understood that if she could get to Jesus, sometimes you just got to make your way. And if you make your way, and if you want it bad enough, you're not going to care about what people say about you. Because when you're desperate to have an encounter of the Most High, you will make your way and not care about what the world says. Because you know that you need a touch of the Savior. Hey, you know what I'm talking about? I've heard that like a billion times. I just don't think that she was like that cocky. I don't think that she was that secure. I, you know what I think? I honestly think that she was afraid and scared. And she wasn't like, I don't care what you do to me. No, 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 I care. I care. She was probably sneaking around. She was probably trying not to be seen. Have you ever been somewhere and you see someone you know at the mall, you're not wearing the right thing, so you're just like not trying to be seen. Sneaky people. Can I tell you that God uses sneaky Christians? Sneaky people? There's some sneaky people here today. You don't want me to see you. I roll my eyes and you look down every time. You feel like I'm talking to you. That's not it. It's just we're trying to sneak around because we don't want to be found out. We, 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 we want people to know that we're still made out of clay. We don't want people to see the cracks in us. And we'll be there, and if I'm on the stairs, you'll take the ramp. If you're on the ramp, you'll take the steps. People are like, oh, here for the first time, go get your coffee. And you're like, I don't even want coffee. Because you're like, I don't want people to see my clay because everybody else is special and I'm not. But God says, your life is the light. There's no such thing as good and bad. Like, can I tell you, we're all humans. We're all lamps. Now, lamps give light. But the thing about lamps in those days is that the, the, the light came from a fire, and the fire is it's, 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 it's fire that burns, and it gives some warmth. Now, I believe that this is an aspect of the lamp in the life that God wants us to be mindful of it's not just enough that you are bright you also have to have a passion it's not enough for you to post really cool things that other smart people say that's giving light but light without warmth exposes but not covers like like have you ever like woken up in the morning turn on the light in the bathroom and you're like Ugh, you know what i'm talking about like, like my wife has one of those mirrors. Like as a guy, I didn't grow up with one of these mirrors, but there's these mirrors that really zoom in. I don't know about this. And I made the mistake of like see myself in one of these mirrors. And I, I'm like, wow. <laughs> like, thank God love is blind. You know what I mean? Like, she's like, I'm like, I keep her blind. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I felt so exposed. There are some Christians that use their light to expose. We like going around and talking about how good we are, making people feel how bad they are. So it says, be a lamp, not just a light, a lamp. Why? Because a light has warmth. It's inviting. There's nothing like going into um, one of those stores in the middle of the winter, and it just feels warm and toasty. You ain't trying to go nowhere. You, you, you get to work, and there's like the heater in your car, and you know you're about to walk 10 steps in the cold because in San Diego we're spoiled. And you're like, I'm trying to stay here. Like, the fire is, 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 is an atmosphere changer. I have to ask you, what, what, what sets your life on fire? What makes you burn on the inside? Is it money? Are you only on fire when, when you got money? Is that the goal? Like, when I get there, man, just like, uh. 
different million dollar team. Let's go. Money. Is it like clout? Like, like when you get like a hundred likes, you're like, yes, made it today. Someone I got followed by someone with a blue check mark. Uh, everybody's got a blue check mark. They're all fake now. <laughs> if you got one, that's cool. I ain't judging. Low key, but not high key. Well, what is it? Recognition? Is that, is that what fires you up? Is it money? Is it fame? Is it glory? Is it the applause of people? Is it compliments? Is it words? What is it? Because can I tell you, anything that fires you up that is not from God will eventually run out. It's, it's a cyclical thing. Have you ever met people with those addictive personalities? They're about something and they're on fire. And then it runs out and they come back to you and you're like, I knew it. And they come back, they usually come back here. They, they come back to me like, Pastor, I'm here now, I'm here now. I'm like, oh, that's right. Two months later, they're gone. Yeah, this is it. This is my new life. And they come back. Oh, no, that was whack. Oh, I knew that. Because there is nothing outside of the presence of God that will maintain you on fire. It just isn't. So then how do you get that fire? How, how do you get that fire? Uh, a, a couple, a couple not, not so long ago. If I can be honest, God bless those kids. It's revival happening in the children as well. I love it. Or exorcisms, I don't know. One of those. Not so long ago, not so long ago, I was driving to, um, to the barber shop. I was driving to see my barber. And and I felt the presence of God in the car. And I'm not, like, trying to be weird about it. I'm not trying to be weird. Like, oh, I feel like God, pastor feels like the presence of God. Like, it was, doesn't happen that often like this. But at this moment, it was like, I felt it. And I was talking to God. I, I honestly felt like he could hear me. And I started having a conversation. And, and let me be honest. I was, I, was, I was at a place where I wasn't proud of myself. I wasn't doing anything, anything sketchy that you got to worry about. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's not going to be a scandal this week, whatever. I was honestly at a place, and maybe you've never been, never, you've, you've probably never been there before, but I felt like a failure. I felt like I wasn't really as good as I thought I was. And I was being faced with this internal conversation of like, man, like, what if all of this was just like a mistake? And the crazy thing about opening up that little can of worms is that like, if, like the, the Bible is true. What, what you seek, you will find. You want to find something to be depressed about? There's so much to be depressed about. You want to find something to be cynical about? You can just go there. You'll find it. So I kind of allow myself to go on down this path of like, just like, I, I threw myself like a pity drive. And, 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 and not even to make it funny, but it was, it was a sad moment. I was like, God, like, I feel like I, I messed it up. I feel like I let some people down the wrong path. And, 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 and wow, like, that's, that's horrible. And then I had that moment and I said, okay, God, like, I, it's not like he was going to, like, speak to me directly. But I said, you know what, God, honestly, I just want you to be proud of me. I, I don't need any man or woman to tell. I, honestly, I just, I just want to know at the end of the day that you, God, are proud of me. I, I didn't grow up with people telling me they were proud of me. They just wanted me to work, 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 work. And they assume you do good. Well, that's, hey, you get to do good, right? And I just never really heard, like, hey, proud of you. So I'm like, God, I just, like, I don't need to hear it because I've never heard it anyway. But I honestly, like, at the depth of my spirit, I want you to be proud of me. When and I got a dope fade. <laughs> Big Max here. Shout out. Hit him up. <laughs> And, um, and I woke up the next day. The next day. I'm going to ask, ask Crystal. I showed her. I, I woke up early. My kids woke me up. I don't have an alarm. I have kids. 
They come in and they elbow my nose. I, bah, give me your iPad. It's time for Roblox. Like, ah. Oh. I woke up and I looked at my phone because that's what we all do. And I had a text from a pastor. I'm not going to cry. And, and all the text said, said, it said, I'm proud of you. That's all it said. You, I, why, I don't know why y'all clap, but I'll take it. But the pastor didn't write that because he was proud of me. I don't work for him. <laughs> Some guy in Rancho Cucamonga. I'm proud of you. That was from God. And, and I realized that at that moment, that, that, that gave me fire. That was, that was the fire that I'm talking about. He didn't send a check. <laughs> like the church wasn't packed that Sunday. It wasn't anything. It was just a fire that God knew that I needed at that moment. And you know why I got it? Because I asked for it. Could it be that you have so little because you ask so little? Wow. Can you, could, you, could you be that you don't have exactly what you need? Not because God is like unavailable. It's, it's, just, it's just that we haven't asked. So, so he says, you need to be on fire. You need to figure out what gets you on fire. And you need to get it. And you need to ask for it. Every single one of you, do not allow yourself to be in that moment that I was for a day. Some of you have been there for months, and the devil knows that. And, and, and you know what he does to keep you from getting it? He keeps you quiet, makes you think that you're the only one that is lacking fire. Nah, 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 nah. But when you reach out to God, the source of it all, it's not like the heavens are going to open up, but he will make sure that none of his children go lacking because he loves you that much and he wants you to have that fire and passion because his obsession is your life. He's obsessed with your life, not with the church service, with your life. God's not obsessed with this. God's obsessed with you, with what worries you with what keeps you up at night, with what stresses you out, as little as it is, it's a big deal to my father. So it says, be, be a lamp. Be a lamp. Find your fire and be a lamp. But, just, but there's some people that, that take that lamp and they go into obscure places. They hide their light. Have you been hiding your light? How do we hide our light we think that hiding our light as a Christian means to go into dark spaces, to go into the world. Why are you going to such obscure places? Why are you going to the club? Where's my girl's birthday? What do you mean? It's a party going on. It's a lot of LED lights in there. It ain't that dark. You can't hide a light in the darkness because lights are brighter in the dark. So how does a Christian hide their light? By staying in places where already lit up. That's what's been killing us. Christians, that everything they have around them is Christian. All my friends are Christian. All my music's Christian. My food is Christian. My dog's Christian. I'm not, I, I'm not saying like, Oh, pastor's saying go live worldly lives. No, darkness is not the things that are around you or the things that you allow inside of you. Cynicism, anxiety, depression, guilt, pride, self-righteousness. Now that is darkness. Jesus says, I'm a friend of sinners. You would find Jesus like in the house of tax collectors and sinners and drug dealers, and he would be out there with peso pluma right now just chilling at Coachella. Like, like that would be Jesus. That's Jesus. Jesus would have been at Coachella. That's like the one sound bite. I don't go to church because Pastor said Jesus was at Coachella. Just relax. <laughs> relax, 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 relax. You're just bitter because you can't afford it. Let's be honest. 
Next year, people, next year. I keep looking at my wife. Are we good still? Okay, all right. Next week is like, church is done. <laughs> we, we, Jesus was with, with, with sinners because the light is designed to go to the darkness. Mother Teresa has this great quote. It says, if I'm made to be a saint, may they call me a saint of darkness, not in the heaven, but going into the earth to shine into the darkness, those who are lost to find their way to Christ. Isn't that what Jesus did? Forsook the light of heaven to come to the darkness of earth to become the light. How do you become the light? By being an embodiment of love. Because love is light. You cannot see light, but without light, you can't see. Love, you cannot see it, but when love steps in, you see clearly. You see, my life changed when love came into my life. I remember a leader came into my life for the first time in my teenage years, and they didn't judge me. They didn't try to change me. They just loved me. And you know what love does? It exposes things around you, and it makes you confront all the junk that's in your life. It was a leader that didn't say, hey, bro, you got to change this. No, he just loved me so much for who I was that I'm like, yo, bro, honestly, I got to change. I can't live in this, in this mess. I can't live in all of it. And I'll close with this. I'll get the team out to make me sound spiritual. But like, 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 this is what love does. When someone gets around you who loves you, they're not going to try to change you. God is not in a hurry to change you. He's in a hurry to love you. So why are you in a hurry to change anybody? But what happens is this, when, when, when love comes in, you're forced to see the mess that you've allowed into your life. The habits, the, 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 the drug addiction and the alcoholism and the depression and the, and the gossip and all the sex and all the laziness and all the bad spending habits and all the immorality and all of the cheating and all of the hate and all of the bitterness and all of the unforgiveness. The true love sits with you in your mess and says, I love you just the way you are, but I hope, I hope that you would confront the things that you're allowing in the darkness. We cannot expect the world to get better. It's in the dark. They can't even see it. Sometimes we think love is for us to point things out of things that are in their life, but if they're in the darkness, they might not even believe what you're saying because they can't see what you see. They can't see that they're hurting themselves. They can't see that they're holding themselves back from living to their full potential. But when love steps in, you see clearly. We're not done by being a light. When God says be the church and be the light is that we are going to go on a journey with people to hold up a lamp in their dark space as they begin to clean up whatever it is they need to clean up. You're not Jesus. You, you can't fix them. So stop. Some of your lives are so messed up because you spend all your energy trying to like fix other people's lives and you're so broken. Start with you. Just start with you. No, but I'm, I'm good. There's, there's probably a small crack. No, no, I'm actually in a really good season. You forget you're made of clay and you're fragile and we all have a crack and we all have a fault. But still, God says, your life is the light of the world. So you got to protect your light. Protect it. How do you protect it? You, 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 you don't live like you're ordinary. The, the, the true tragedy of Christianity, if I can be honest, is not that we live reckless lives. It's that we live common lives. It's not that we go out and then we make mistakes is that we don't step out into the unknown and try things that without God we would fail. So when God says, I want you to be the light in the darkness, that means step out into the unknown. Step out into the untried and unseen, the never before done things. We ought to be that church. That is an open house for those who the church has shut their doors to. We ought to be the church that is an open house. Not... For sinners, we're all sinners. We all are. We're just clay. You know what makes me special? I said I'm filled with oil. And that oil is available. That's, it's, it's called the Holy Spirit. Don't be fooled by the tattoos. 
This is the only thing that's relevant in this place. This is my oil, and when I get it within me, it's a fire that doesn't burn out. And I don't chase it weekend after weekend. And, and, and post after post. Whoever gives you validation has the power to take it away. But when you realize that you are validated by the mere fact that you're the one sperm that caught and was born, you were already born. Purpose. So live. Live. Pastor, what do I do with my life? Don't worry about a plan. First, worry about your passion. So many people with plans and no passion. You have the best plan and no passion. You will fail. You could have no plans, but you got a passion to live. God says, there is someone I can use. There is someone that I can put in and that will shine for me. Let me tell you, you're not ordinary. You're not common. This is why you're here sometimes on Sundays. You just need to be reminded of that. That God loves you. That God made you. And that he wants to use you. I can invite you to stand to your feet with me today.